Hey guys, welcome back. Um, we're starting a new unit on DNA. So today um, we're going to go over some of the basics about DNA um, since you haven't learned about it in biology yet, but hopefully um, this will give you enough information to be able to use it as we move forward in forensic science. So DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. Um, it is a d negatively charged double-stranded chain of nucleotides. So it's negatively charged and it's made up of nucleotides, which we have learned. Okay, we have purine bases, which include adenine, okay, and guanine, all right, and then we have pyrimidine bases, which include thymine and cytosine. All right, so our purine bases are double rings, all right, and our pyrimidine bases are single rings, all right, so purine means double, pyrimidine means single. I used to remember this in college by thinking about purine as a shorter word, but it's a double ch double ring. Pyrimidine is a longer word, but it's a short, shorter thing, okay? And then adenine, guanine, thymine, and cytosine, ATCG um, are our four. All right, um, DNA is also made, has a backbone. It is made of sugar or a di deoxyribose. It's a um, uh, five-sided um, um, sugar and then a phosphate, okay? So in 1950, um, biochemist Erwin Shargaff, Shargraff, um, he discovered that the number of adenine and thymine were equal. And uh, the same was true for guanine and cytosine. So what did he draw from this discovery? All right, if adenine and thymine are equal, all right, then those two have to bond together. And if guanine and cytosine are equal, then those two have to bond together. And then when you sum all the adenine, thymine, guanine, and cytosines, you end up with 100% of all your bases that are found in DNA. All right, so let's look at the double helix. So DNA has directionality, all right? Each chain, okay, has a top end and a bottom end. The top end is called the five prime, and the bottom end is called the three prime, all right? It's called five and three, and it's based on um, numbering the carbons on the deoxyribose sugar. We number the carbons starting at the top and then moving in a clockwise direction. So therefore, the five prime being the top Okay, means it's the fifth carbon in the chain, and the three pr prime being the bottom means it's the third carbon in the chain. All right, um, the two nucleotides wind together into a double helix. All right, and then hydrogen bonds between the paired bases hold those two strands together. So hydrogen bonds, just like there is in water. All right, the strands are anti-parallel, so one... Um, they move opposite directions of each other. So um, one ha will have, um, if we look at this picture here, this would be the five prime and this would be the three prime, okay? But this one, this would be the three prime and this would be the five prime. So they're moving in opposite directions. They are anti-parallel, all right? And so here is an image um, that, uh, a chain um, that shows you that the five prime and the three prime are here, but it goes in reverse in the other direction. All right, so let's talk about what genes are. There's different names for different genes. So a gene is a series of nucleotides that codes for a polypeptide. Okay, a polypeptide is also called a protein. All right, and each gene has at least a promoter region, an initiation or start site, a coding region, and a termination site. So promoter, initiation, coding, and termination. All right, um, in eukaryotes, genes can be as large as uh, 100,000 base pairs, okay? Um, we have, within um, the genes, we have introns. Introns are non-coding regions, and these are usually spliced or cut out um, of created proteins. And then we have exons, and exons are the coding regions, okay? So introns are inserted and have to be taken out um, and spliced out, so introns have have been inserted and have to be taken out. Exons are your coding region. All right, so DNA is not floating around loose inside the nucleus. Um, it's wrapped, um, most of the time it's wrapped tightly around um, these special proteins called histones, okay, and those histones unwind and wind as we need to um, make different proteins, okay, and then um, and those histones um, make structures called chromosomes. Um, we've been learned, you'll have learned about chromosomes in cell structure. 
All right, um, there are two special chromosomes in um, all animals um, known as the X and Y. And this, um, the X and Y determine the sex of an individual. Um, almost all individuals have two of these chromo chromosomes, but not all, um, but almost all. So an XX combination is a female, an X combination is a male, and a YY combination is impossible, okay? So you could have um, a YY combination would end up in... Um, a miscarriage in a human um, because it cannot form. You must have at least one X, okay? There is a condition where you can have three Xs, um, and if you do the extend in biology, um, you'll learn about those different conditions. Um, all other chromosomes, okay, um, that do not code for um, sex, they are known as autosomes. Okay, so almost all human cells are diploid. Diploid die, meaning two of each. So we have each of our 23 chromosomes come in pair for a total of 46 chromosomes. All right, one half of each pair comes from the mother's haploid. Haploid means half, okay, haploid egg, okay, and the other half comes from the father's haploid sperm. So if we look at our image here, the, we have one and one in each, the sperm and the egg, and then we make a diploid um, zygote. Okay, um, two chromosomes in each pair are called homologous, homo meaning same homologous chromosomes, because they carry similar genes controlling the same inherited um, characteristics. So they're homologous, same paired um, chromosomes, homologous chromosomes. So here is an image of the human genome. You notice 1 through 22, they're the same size, okay? And these are our, all our autosomes, and then we have the X and the Y. The X is larger than the Y, okay? And sometimes, and females will have two Xs, and they will be the same size. All right, so let's look at sexual reproduction and what that looks like, okay? Two parents, all right, give rise to offspring that have unique combinations, okay? Um, each chromosome is a pair, and they can be, they are sorted individually in this, as seen in this Punnett square. Each of the two members can have slight differences in the DNA sequences. So the mother in this has a two and a three, where the father has a three and a four, five, okay? Different versions of the same sequence in the same gene are called, and this is really hard to see, but they are called alleles, okay? So different versions are called alleles. A pair of alleles inherited from your parents is called your genotype, okay? A pair of alleles is called your genotype. Um, if the if an individual has the same gene sequence from both mom and dad, as we see right down here, all right, we're... We're, we call them homozygous for those alleles. Homo meaning same. If they inherit different sequences, as we see in these three images, okay, they're called hetero. Hetero meaning different. Heterozygous. Okay, all right, so we've already gone over which of these are homozygous and which are heterozygous. Make sure to fill out your Punnett square on your um, graphic organizer. Um, a heterozygote is an individual having two different alleles, so like heterozygous, heterozygote. Okay, that would be a heterozygote. And homozygote is an individual who has the same allele. So there's an, an example of a homozygote. All right, allelic dominance. So, all right, you are said to have, so capital letters designate dominance. So allele a, capital A, is dominant when its phenotype, its physical expression of the, heteros, of the heterozygote AA, capital A, lowercase a, is the same from the homozygote um, big A, big A, but difference from the homozygote little a, little a. So what does this mean? So let's think about um, dimples. Dimples are a dominant phenotype, okay? You will have dimp dimples if you have either capital A, capital A, or capital A, lowercase a. Only the homozygote lowercase a and lowercase a will not have dimples, and I'm talking about dimples when you smile, okay? That would be a dominant phenotype. All right, a recessive phenotype, okay? Recessive would be the opposite, not having dimples. This is where your lowercase a, lowercase a, the lack of dimples shows up, okay? All right, recessive, all right? If the phenotype, the expression is different 
from the capital A, capital A, and capital A, lower A. All right, and then we have codominant. All right, codominant if both capital A and lowercase a contribute to a phenotype equally. And that would be something like your eye color. Okay, it's um, codominant in various different genes. It's coded by various different genes. Um, though brown, t the brown gene tends to be a little bit more dominant. It's a spectrum. Okay. I think this is the end of the video. Um, I look forward to talking to you more about DNA in class. Um, this is a really exciting thing, and you'll learn definitely a whole lot more in um, biology.